already know, bro. You're sick of dropping the ball when your team needs you. I get it, man. You're sick of letting yourself down. But check it out. There is a way that you can change this. I know what you're thinking. How? Well, cut on that five of you, man. You say I'm the goat. Hey, hey. I still look in the mirror like no hey, hey. Oh, it's another skills Friday. And today we're going to learn how to really see the ball so we can catch the ball. Seeing the ball will help you drop less passes and also help you anticipate when the ball is coming. So there are three things we're going to go over in this video. We're going to understand what goes into seeing the ball. We're going to understand what to look at on the ball. And we're going to understand how we can improve looking for the ball. Let's go into understand what we need to see on the ball. And in order to see on the ball, we need to understand we got to use our eyes. Now, let's understand certain eye tests that we are doing. The eye test that you do at the doctors where you're literally looking forward and you're reading the letters on the page and they're like, oh, what does this say? Well, what does this line say? That doesn't help in football. That type of vision is a different type of vision that we're going to be looking at because that's looking at how well you see things from a distance and how well you are able to see things that are stopped, which goes to my next move, my next part. Let's talk about eye movements. Eye movements is more so more important because eye movement is what you're going to need to track the ball. You don't track the ball by just staring at it for a long time or people that win staring contests will be the best catchers. So that doesn't really make sense. So let's look into eye movements we need to train to become better. The three most important eye movements that we're going to go into are smooth pursuits, saccades, and vestibular ocular reflex, as or also known as VOR. We're going to say VOR in this video because vestibular ocular reflex, that's a tongue twister. Say that five times. Now, let's get into smooth pursuits. Smooth pursuits is the ability to how well and smooth your eye follows the ball. So a perfect example of smooth pursuits would be in a contest where you're running a fly route, you're running deep, and you're able to track the ball. That's smooth pursuits. Saccades is actually different. Saccades is how well your eyes jump from subject to subject. Now, an example of this in a game is if you're going to run a deep route, and let's say the ball goes over your shoulder. You're unable to track it. You literally look over your shoulder, you're looking up, and then you're unable to track it over your shoulder. So you're, you want to be able to let your eyes jump to over your shoulders or let your eyes jump to where you're going to predict where the ball will be. And a vestibular ocular reflex, this is the ability. What we're going to look for here is the ability to track the ball after you turn your head. So let's say you're turning your head and you're going for a deep route and the ball is over your shoulder. You want to be able to turn your head in another direction if you're running a deep post so you're able to track the go ahead, find the ball and track it again. A little bit different than saccades where you're focusing your eyes jumping. Vestibular ocular reflex helps your eyes track the ball once again or helps your, your eyesight go and track the ball once again after you've lost sight of it or after you turned your head. Next point we're going to talk about is we need to understand what we're looking at on the ball. Now, this is going to differ into what route you're running or where you lose sight of the ball, or where you're tracking the ball, because you're not going to look at the ball the same way if you're running across the field as if you're running up and you're running under the ball. The ball is going to look different. You're going to have two different vantage points of where you want to put your hands, two different vantage points of where you're going to guess the ball is going to go. So let's get into that. When you're running a deep route, what you want to look at is you want to look at the ball, stripe, then point. What I mean by ball, stripe, and point is you want to locate the ball first, then locate the white stripe, and then find the point, and you're able to cup your hands under the point. Ball to stripe to point is because sometimes people struggle tracking the ball. And if you're able to track the ball with ease, stripe and point is where you need to go. But a lot of times people are able or unable to just make that quick switch and they're trying to 
find a strike, but it's like you didn't even correctly. You don't even know where the ball's at in space, and you don't really know where the ball's gonna land. So like a lot of times people look at the strike, focus on the stripe a lot, don't know where the point's at. Like if the points just keep going around and it's not like a duck or it's not in a straight spiral, you still you don't want to focus on the point too much, but you want to be able to be able to find a spot where you can put your hands on the ball safely and securely. Now, when the ball's coming straight at you fast and you're running across the middle of the field, what you really want to focus on is the strike and you want to grab the fat of the ball. So you want to grab the laces or the big part of the ball. The reason this is important is because a lot of times people focus on the point and they're like, oh, well, I got to grab it right here. Like, no, you want to grab the biggest part of the ball that you're able to grab safely and securely and you want to know where exactly the ball's going ball if it's coming straight at you it's coming straight at you it's not it's not just going magically fly 20 yards over your head it's probably coming straight at you so you need to be able to find a fat of the ball grab the ball safely and securely and secure it now the important part you want to remember here is you want to grab it safely and securely now there's different styles a lot of times people put the diamond up the diamond works or you, you could catch it on the back end where you're kind of cupping your hands and then grabbing it. Both ways work, but you want to grab the fat of the ball all the time. Here's three drills that you can use to improve your eyesight on the field and help you catch these passes. To improve your smooth pursuits, the drill we're going to have is follow the ball. This is simply where you're going to have a partner. The partner is going to point out something on the ball that you need to follow and you have to follow the ball. What your partner's looking at at your eyes is he wants to make sure, your partner wants to make sure that you are smoothly, your eyes are smoothly following the ball. You don't want it to jump around or be like frantic because that's cicades. That's a different thing. You want to smoothly be able to track the ball. Now make sure you're not moving your head. You want to keep your head still and you're just moving your eyes. And as as a uh, partner, you want to make sure that they're not turning their head either. You're really focusing on the eyes here. That's all you want to focus on. The next drill is actually very similar. It's still to follow the ball drill. Now with your, now this time I want the player to follow with their eyes, but the eyes are going to be jumping. So this allows the partner that's moving the ball, he can move the ball anywhere. It doesn't have to be up, down, left, right. It could be literally anywhere that's in front of them. And what you're paying attention to here is the person's eyes. You want to make sure their eyes are jumping from point to point to point to point to point. If you're telling them and then like allow a way to make this game even tougher is just like, OK, I want you to find a point on this ball and then move it to multiple different areas faster at different speeds. Now, this allows the person to look and try to find these spots and allows and really challenges them to their eyes to jump. The next drill is to test the vestibular ocular reflex, the VOR. This is going to be a simple pass the ball over the shoulder drill. Now you're going to have another, you're going to have a partner on this one. And what I want the partner to do is to pass the ball over your head. Now you want to look towards your partner, follow the ball over your head. Now, once, there's going to be a dead spot where you're unable to see the ball. That is apparent, uh, especially with a helmet. You want to act like you have a helmet on. So like you're not going to be able to see that. So once you're once you're following, you want to turn your head, track the ball again. As you see on the screen, follow, look at his eyes, follow the ball, track the ball again. This ball should be over your shoulders every time. We want to do five catches and then you can switch with a partner or 10 catches and switch with a partner doesn't really matter here make sure you're getting that working check this video out on the screen if you want to be mean on that green or real on that field or extort on that court the no bottle left behind act supports this video you feel me